well, Michigan basketball analytically is having their worst season since 2008. They stand today with an 8-20 and record, but what went wrong for the Wolverines and what does their future look like possibly firing Juwan Howard? There's speculation abound. We're going to look back at Michigan's last decade or so and take a look at how the Jawan Howard era has seemingly gone off the rails here with a 3-14 and in-conference record. And by the way, it's not like the Big Ten is this crazy elite conference this year. Originally under John Beeline, Michigan basketball was humming. In 2013, they were a four seed. They made the national championship game, losing to Louisville. Louisville's national title has since been vacated. That was the Rick Pitino team. In 2014, they were a two seed. They made the Elite Eight. In 2017, they were a seven seed and had an appearance in the Sweet 16. In 2018, under John Beeline, they were a three seed. And that's the first team we're going to really look at. You can see Michigan analytically finishing number seven as a three seed, making once again, that's two times in the span of five years, not just the final four, but the national championship. They did get trounced by Villanova. And this was kind of a lucky run by Michigan when you look at it, facing Montana in the first round, Houston in the second round. That was the Jordan Poole shot, the three-pointer at the end to win them that game by one point. They faced a seven-seed Texas A&M, a nine-seed FSU, and then did face the crazy Cinderella Loyola Chicago Final Four run. That's a lot of lower seeds, but still, that was the Mo Wagner team for Michigan. They come back the next year, another phenomenal year under John Beeline, the number four overall team analytically. They did get bounced in the Sweet 16, losing to Texas Tech, only scoring 44 points, kind of a letdown there. Texas Tech was a three seed, but still, the continuity of Michigan basketball was amazing. They were virtually a guarantee guaranteed tournament lock, guaranteed top five, six seed, year in and year out. And then John Beeline decided to make the jump. This was always a curious decision to me. John Beeline going to the NBA just based around his age, based on how well Michigan basketball was humming. It The NBA just did not seem like a good fit for John Beeline. And evidently, looking back on it, we know it clearly was not a good fit. John Beeline taking over the struggling Cleveland Cavaliers. When I saw the Cavs had hired him, I thought, that's very interesting. Kind of like an exotic move. Beeline's been so good at Michigan. I kind of liked it for the Cavs, but it did not work out. Beeline went 14-40. and 40, and again, at this point, the Cavs were rebuilding. They had a ridiculously young team. They're nowhere like they are now. And Beeline resigned during his first year in Cleveland. And that enters Jawan Howard. When it comes to Michigan hiring Jawan Howard, I understand the whole idea of it's a Michigan man. He's a former player. He's got a lot of connections. He'll be really good in terms of recruiting. But you're a very attractive program if you are Michigan basketball based off of the continuity that they had under John Beeline. And it wasn't like John Beeline left on bad terms. He went to get basically a pay raise, go to the NBA. You would think Michigan would hire an up-and-coming young head coach. It's an attractive job. But they took a chance on Jawan Howard. And in his first season, he had a very nice year in 2020, finishing analytically number 14 at 19 and 12. That was when the Big Ten was a real meat grinder. It was a really good conference. Michigan undoubtedly would have made the tournament probably as a five or a six seed. That was the team mainly led by Xavier Simpson and Isaiah Livers. However, with the tournament being canceled, that was the end of that. In 2021, Michigan had their best regular season that they ever had under Jawan Howard, finishing analytically fifth, making the tournament as a one seed at 23-5. and five. This was the year in 2021 when there were a lot of mad Illinois fans because Michigan had a few games canceled because of the pandemic. You can see only 28 total games that season, but they were a number one seed and they did end up making an appearance in the Elite Eight, losing to an 11 seed UCLA when they had their crazy Cinderella run. But still a very good year for Michigan. Whenever you're a one seed, you have a really good year in the Big Ten Conference. Things are looking up. The next year, however, Michigan takes a step back, finishing analytically 24th, just four games above 500. They barely made the tournament as an 11 seed, but they did have a Sweet 16 appearance. So Jawan Howard, in terms of his tournament record, even as an 11 seed making the Sweet 16, beating Colorado State and Tennessee, and then losing 
to Villanova. Still a decent year for Michigan basketball. And then we know what happened in 2023. Michigan finishing just two games above 500, making an appearance in the NIT, losing in the second round to Vanderbilt with Hunter Dickinson, who was considered one of the better players of college basketball. This was the prom with Jawan Howard having the altercation at the end of the Wisconsin game. And to be honest with you, I'm very surprised they did not fire Jawan Howard. That just simply cannot happen. Look, I can understand if it's a player, it's a 20-year-old kid, you know, you've got a lot of testosterone, I get it. You cannot have your head coach acting like that. That's an embarrassment. Now, they did suspend him for the entirety of the season, but I am very surprised Michigan didn't just fire him, especially considering, I mean, at that point, you can kind of understand Jawan Howard. He had made several Sweet 16s. He was a one seed a few years ago. He still had a really good record. One bad year of going 18 and 16 and struggling in the NIT and also having the altercation, maybe it's not enough to do him in, but this year it has just compounded, and it really began with Hunter Dickinson going to Kansas. If you are Michigan, you consider yourself you know, a top 15, top 10 college basketball program, because I'm sure a lot of Michigan people do, you cannot lose a player of Hunter Dickinson's caliber to another blue blood. They didn't have the NIL in place. And they end up losing him, and now Michigan is almost outside of the top 100 in terms of analytics this year. They're 8-20. and 20. They have no chance of making March Madness unless they somehow win the Big Ten tournament, which is not going to happen. 3-14 and 14 in Big Ten play, and at this point, very likely will lose the three remaining games they do have. Maybe they win one of them, but at this point, people are wondering, will Juwan Howard get fired? There was another altercation with Juwan Howard that happened in December of 2023 with Michigan coming out and having to clear him. This article, which dates back to late December, says that rumors swirled last week about an altercation between Howard and the strength and conditioning coach, John Sanderson, in which no punches were reportedly thrown, but the school said no disciplinary action was warranted. Michigan put a zero tolerance policy on Howard after his altercation with a Wisconsin assistant coach. And now the question is, will Howard be fired? I would imagine yes at this point. They will, Michigan will be moving on from Juwan Howard and going in a different direction just based off of where their program is right now. Now, they do have one top recruit for their upcoming recruiting class, the number 30 player in the country, but it's just one player. And, you know, the head coach is so much more important than any single recruit. Even if you do lose that recruit, that's just something you're going to have to deal with. So for Michigan basketball, it's been a very hard fall. Some of it was not being able to adapt to NIL like other schools. Losing Hunter Dickinson certainly wasn't great. But even with Dickinson playing very well last year, Michigan still was bounced in the NIT, making just the second game. So we'll have to see what the future of Michigan basketball is. It seems kind of obvious that they're probably just going to rehire John Beeline. Like, John Beeline never should have left college basketball, in my opinion. He's the perfect pick, pick to take over at Michigan again. You could say, well, he's too old now. But I don't know. We'll see. There's also rumors that maybe Michigan decides to go for an up-and-coming mid-major coach, possibly someone like Dusty May, although I have heard Dusty May linked to both Ohio State and Indiana, possibly looking to also replace coaches. Imagine Michigan, Ohio State, and Indiana all need to replace coaches. Those are three huge teams in the Big Ten. Looking at Jawan Howard's career at Michigan, it's been very feast or famine. The first three years, they were projected six seed. The tournament didn't happen. They're a one seed. They're an 11 seed, but they make the Sweet 16. But still, being an 11 seed and barely making the tournament, that's not a great look. And then you can see in 2023, they missed the tournament completely. And then this year, the things go completely off the rails. And then just looking at Michigan versus an average Big Ten team, you can see how bad it's gotten. This is the first time they're below an average Big Ten team since 2015. And they are, you know, they're having their worst season again since 2008. Analytically, you can see just based off of this graph. But either way, that is the rise and rapid fall of Michigan basketball. Certainly, they can turn it around, but they do need to make a good coaching hire. That's going to do it for this video, guys. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.